Joining me now is City Council Member Keith Powers, and we're going to talk a little bit about the small businesses and the effect the COVID pandemic has had on them. Keith, you um, you are the City Council Member for District 4, which covers, and the list is long, Carnegie Hall, Central Park South, Garment District, Koreatown, Midtown East, Midtown West, Murray Hill, Peter Cooper Village, Stuyvesant Town, Sutton Place, Times Square, Tudor City, Turtle Bay, Upper East Side, and Waterside Plaza. Did I get them all? Did I, I think you got them all. I'm sure somebody somewhere feels like I didn't say their right. particular neighborhood, but we are such a city of neighborhoods that yeah. uh, we make sure we want to let everybody know which part of town we represent. Of course. And it's important, right? So before this pandemic, small businesses had been experiencing real real trouble. There wasn't a block that I would walk down and see um, just empty storefronts. It was, it was, we were in a crisis in this city with small businesses as it was. Now with this pandemic and things being shut down, what, what's going to happen? And I mean, even if the economy is kicked back into, into some sort of working scenario, what's going to happen? What are you seeing, hearing? Yeah, thanks. Thanks for the question. We uh, were already in New York City facing a moment where all of the beloved retailers that we uh, we go to in our neighborhoods and throughout the city were facing challenges when it came to the change in online retail. The change, by the way, in the way people behave socially with the people can stay home and put Netflix on. So, you know, and, and do other and behave in different ways now. So the city was already facing this moment where the landscape was really changing. We did have a lot of vacant storefronts and a lot of businesses that were watching this new reality unfold. That was all before the pandemic. Now we are in a moment that rarely we would ever see, or we probably have never seen in New York City, where basically our entire economy is shut. All of our small businesses have basically been asked to shut down, slow down, or change the way that they do business. And it is going to have a severe impact on uh, our economy. You know, we, we are going to ask the federal government to help, help us out with a lot of this, but we are facing a really uncertain moment. I did a town hall last night on small business. We had, I think, about 150 attendants uh, in attendance for the small business community. And we got some very basic questions about how do I fill this application out? How do I do this? But you could tell that underlying all of that was this uncertainty about what comes next and the need and the reliance for financial assistance and regulatory assistance for these businesses. But I mean, just to answer the question more directly, we are facing a moment where many businesses outside of getting financial help from the federal, state, and local government will likely would have to shut their doors and many of their employees would be facing unemployment. The good news-ish is that we are putting some of these programs into place and we are gonna have to do more undoubtedly because we under we totally under projected how severe this was going to be, especially in New York City. Well, I mean, most most people, um, you know, never mind most businesses. You know, it's a paycheck to paycheck, month to month. I mean, you drop off a month of business, it's going to be pretty difficult to keep that going. What are some of the programs that you're 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 thinking are going to get into place? Are there any already in place that people can apply to? Sure. The federal government has a couple of programs. The one that I point a lot of folks to is the, pay, the PPP, which is the Paycheck Protection Plan, which is about uh, allowing businesses to, if they maintain their payroll and their employees, to be able to get two and a half times their payroll and financial assistance from the federal government. They People are just starting to get those checks. And if they're not, they should reach out to us and we're happy to help them go through that process. That's a really significant one because you get to keep your employees. We don't have to put them on unemployment. We get to, you get to keep them, keep them on payroll and do continuity through your, of your business, even if you're not operating right now. So a bar or a restaurant, for instance, could keep their employees on payroll and pay them. And that allows them to uh, have continuity through whenever we get out of this. There are uh, also, uh, there's the EIDL, which is another uh, plan from the SBA. We're happy to send all of this out, which are good programs. The city has a program in place to do direct financial assistance to the smallest, like I think it's five or under employees, um, if you want direct financial assistance or a loans program up to $75,000. But two things really matter here. One is we're going to have to do another round of federal stimulus to add more money into that. And the city is almost undoubtedly going to have to relook at its own program and see what money we have to put more money into that 
because we ran out of money immediately on that program because of how much need there was. So we did under, I mean, the, you know, the administration here did underestimate the need. Those are good programs. We have to do more. And we have to make sure that we are making it easy for businesses to get that money because banks are becoming a little bit of a log jam for some folks. Um, there are some workers who can't get financial assistance. So we have to ease some of the regulatory burdens as well to make sure that those businesses can get the money and get it immediately. I mean, this all connects to our, our city's budget, you know, and right. So how has the budget process been impacted by, by the COVID-19 uh, pandemic? It's a, I won't say it's a day by day, but it's almost an hour by hour scenario here. So I am a member of the budget negotiating team of the council, which helps put together the budget and look at our, uh, our financial situation. And it's, it's bleak right now. We are facing about, we did one, there was already $1.3 billion of cuts that the mayor did, I think, a week or two ago. There's probably, it looks like another $700 million that are coming um, that affect your basic services. It could be stuff that, uh, stuff where you send your kids, like summer programs or after school programs. It could be direct services. It could be delaying capital projects into the future. So a lot of things we really care about are paid before by sales tax and property tax and all the commercial rent tax and all these other, all, all these other, um, tax and, and revenue generators for the city, we're facing huge shortfalls. We are facing our real cash shortfall, but I do think we're figuring out the pieces of how to make this work. But I don't wanna be a broken record, but it really is important that the federal government steps in here and not only helps at all localities, but New York City is the epicenter of this in the country. We need the financial assistance in ways that other places just don't need it. We yeah. need to get our economy uh, uh, started again and once this is over and we need to attend to this public health crisis. So that is going to be super important. What we can do here in the city is just make sure that we are not being a burden to these businesses and also finding out how we can provide financial assistance where there might be holes from the federal government. And that's something I'm really focused on is like the, the regulatory burdens and how to ease them in the meantime so people can uh, make it uh, as easy as possible for small businesses right now. So, I mean, I want to talk about this, uh, this issue of rent. And I mean, I, definitely um, personal rent, people paying their personal rent is, is um, there's a cry for things like rent forgiveness, rent freeze, and all those things. But as far as small businesses, um, has there been anything addressed? I mean, I know mortgages have been um, dealt with, but has, has anybody yeah. dealt with the fact that a small business still is going to be expected to pay rent? So there's uh, the, some of the rent assistance bills in Albany, uh, I think the major one, especially the Generis, has a bill, Senator Generis, that one I believe also affects uh, business rents as well, commercial rents. So it would provide them with similar assistance to the residential rents that the bill does. And it's for businesses impacted by COVID, which is almost everybody at this point. And I would give them some, uh, some relief as well. That's one option. But there's a number of, I mean, first of all, the, the, the advice here I'd give to everybody is go talk to your landlord because we're all in this together. And certainly I, I've heard from residential landlords that they are providing some relief to their renters, although not mandated, but voluntary. And that should be happening at the, at the commercial level as well, because there is a fear of mass vacancies and the market significantly changing based on those vacancies. So I do believe residential and commercial landlords are going to need to start thinking about how to keep their tenants there and maintain you know, continuity versus vacating and who knows who moves into the space next. But we are looking at some programs there to help out uh, those folks. The PPP at the federal level, I believe, does allow you to pay your rent right now. So you have to use, I think, it's 70 or 75% for your payroll. The rest of it you can keep for rent and other utilities and things like that, so that's helpful. But I think in the next stimulus from the federal government, they should think more about these small business um, uh, owners and the employees in them because um, that's how you pay your rent, whether you're a small business or you're uh, uh, an employee, an owner or employee, is that money that gets put into your pockets. And so it's going to be a combination of efforts. Um, and at the city level, I'd like us to see if we have any ability to find places where this business, for whatever reason, couldn't get assistance or this employee couldn't get assistance, we can help them, you know, fill in gaps. It's going to be hard for us to do everything based on how much money we will have. But it, I think we can find some targeted ways for people that aren't able to get relief.
Yeah. Now, and you, like, like, like most of us, are working from home. Is your office still available? How can people reach you in the many neighborhoods that you represent? How can yeah, all, you? we're just happy to help. And so what I have, my office is all working from home remotely. They're doing a great job. And they, um, you can email us, K Powers, K, K as in Keith Powers, at council.nyc.gov. We have a person working on every particular issue. So we have somebody working on housing and rent, somebody working on small businesses and unemployment, somebody working on resources. If you want to, if you're a business that can contribute to masks or other types of efforts, we have somebody doing volunteer. We have so, so all of the above. And if you contact us, we will get you to that person. And they're working with the agencies to help out people right now. We're also doing food distribution here. I live in Stuyvesant Town. We're doing a food distribution program out of a, super, a closed supermarket. We repurposed. We delivered 1,700 meals all over the borough of Manhattan right. yesterday. We did 700 last week. We're going to keep going. Um, management here has been great in terms of marshalling resources and volunteers. If you need a meal, we will help you get it. So doing a little bit of everything right now. Um, and really, it's so weird for me to be working from home as a public person, but I'm happy to be here to help anybody in my office is doing as much as we can. Are you doing any more virtual meetings on small businesses that businesses can connect with you on? I would definitely be open to it. So if there's any business who feels like they uh, would like to do another one, we're, we're, we're happy to do it. Last night was sort of after the, as of sort of first round of federal money is coming through, we wanted people to be able to ask questions about how they can, if there's issues with them getting the money or applying for it, or just basic questions of filling forms out, things like that. Um, if there is another round of federal money or city money, I think we probably would want to do another one to give information out to people about how to, how to access all of that. But, but also people can just contact my office and we will get them the information they need. And we are, this is truly a moment of just, we are here to help. You know, I think as a New Yorker born and bred, you know, the small business is part of what New York City is about. And they're even more threatened than they were. We all have our local business that we love. And many of the efforts we've been doing in the past couple of years in the city and state have been to try to protect all those cherished businesses. It would be heartbreaking if we, because of this public health crisis, lost some of those really treasured businesses here. So I am hyper-focused on working with our federal delegation here and also my colleagues here to make sure that we do as much as we can because that is who we are as New York City is these great businesses. You know, what do you think about, I've been seeing a lot of businesses send out like GoFundMe pages and things like that asking for people to donate money towards their employees. What's your take on that? I, look, everybody has, has, should be out there advocating and helping themselves. And I know that for some places, like in my neighborhood, they had to close down. And a lot of folks, like right before the federal money came in and for the city money came in, or if they weren't eligible, wanted to get, you know, just some help to help people pay the bills and pay, the, and pay their bills. I don't think that should be the way that we support businesses right now is like voluntary donations because there's so many of them to help. But you can order food from place if it's open. You can you know, contribute to those. And certainly you should be, you know, speaking up to your elected officials about your desire to help them out. Um, um, so that shouldn't be the main way, but it certainly is one way to help. And um, I also want to say that, you know, one thing I'm really concerned about, particularly in our hospitality industry, is there's a lot of folks who may or may not, may not be able to tap into unemployment or other programs because they may not be a citizen, they may be a non-citizen, or they may be um, you know, to try and make this decision about getting unemployment versus staying as an employee to get money from their employer and through the federal stimulus. There's these really tough questions we have to ask. So if you are, you know, contributing money, you might also want to try to say to the business, like, I want to help out in this way or that way. Like, I think it's helpful to also think through, like, who may not be getting help right now and um, making sure that they're getting part of that assistance because, you know, there are going to be a really a lot of families that are really going to struggle during this moment. Keith Powers, thank you so much. Thank I really you.